Hey everyone, welcome to this weekly episode of Handy Mandy TV. And we have a whole bunch of renovations planned for our house, so I am just going to cover the basics of some painting. I'm not an expert, but I'm having paid attention and, you know, making observations and found some tips and tricks for you guys to help you guys who are looking for a budget-friendly renovation for your house and to increase the value. So I'm going to just show you guys some stuff on painting, what you're going to need and stuff like that. Um, before I get to all the stuff that you're going to need, I have just want to go over some stuff like uh, mist tints. Um, these are, okay, so you're going to the store and you're buying paints and if, say, you go to Benjamin Moore, they have uh, regular paints that are, say, $20, but they require two coats. So if you get an Aura, it's like 50 but it's, again, it's only one coat. You don't have to layer it multiple times. Um, and then mist tints are, say, a customer comes in, they want a certain shade of red or brown or something, but it was not the right color that they wanted. They would have to start from scratch, and that bucket that was the wrong shade gets put in the back and sold at a discount, and that's what's called mist tints. Most places that have, um, you know, paint departments or a paint store like Deluxe Paints, uh, the paints at, say, uh, Home Hardware, Home Depot, um, Benjamin Moore, um, trying to think of Walmart. I don't know how each store operates, but I know that Home Depot and uh, Benjamin Moore, they always have mist tints that they put out. And depending on how busy traffic they get, like Home Depot only had like two a day. Like that's how much was left. People would just swipe them up. Um, at Benjamin Moore, they would have a bigger selection. So um, that's something to consider if you are on a budget. Um, now, if you were to get, say, a white, you can then tint it from that. Uh, I don't know if it costs extra. Give me one sec. Ma? Mom? What? Does it cost extra if you got a white mist tint and then you wanted a different color? So if it's a mist tint, like a white, which technically isn't a mist tint, and you wanted some extra color added in, it's like 80 cents a dollar or whatever. So that's still, uh, say like an aura paint costs $50, it would be like $20, $25 for aura, which is a single coat. And if it's a white, then it would cost like 80 cents to a dollar to get it to the color that you want if it's just a white, which that's easy enough. So um, those are things that you want to consider when you're going to buy paints. Um, and there's, of course, different sizes. Um, you, you can also look for sales on paints. So we went to Rona, and they had this eco brand, and it's it was half off, so it's originally 20 and it's um, it was $10 on sale. And um, they have, you have to make sure, too, if you're painting such a huge room that you need two paint buckets, Make sure to mix them together because sometimes one is a different color than the other and you want it to all match. Um, so that's what a normal size paint bucket looks like. And then there's these small ones. So if you got like little detailed trim, they're considerably smaller. That's a 3.78 liters and this is only 931 milliliters. So again, I think this one was like 3 to $5. This same size was over at uh, Home Depot. Oh, those are turquoise I really wanted, but I, didn't, I couldn't think of anything to paint it with, but it was only like $3. So that's what I mean. The mist tints are such a good deal, and sometimes they have great colors, and then they can, you know, change it for you. Um, so when you're painting, you want to also keep on hand a shade of white, which is going to be your trim around your windows, your ceiling, your baseboard that's on along the floor, just in case you make any mistakes, like you get paint on it. In which case, you would have a damp rag, but if you didn't see it like you're painting it dark, which I wouldn't suggest unless you have really good lighting, you could end up getting paint on there, and then you'd have to paint over it and fix it. Or if, say, it's really dirty, or you're going to paint the baseboards anyways, then you don't have to worry about it. Um, some tips to when you're choosing paints. Um, if you have a big room, and you're doing all three or four sides, depending if it's like an open room, like ours is the living room, and it opens up into the kitchen, um, we have a lighter kind of cream color on one side, and then we have this, it's almost like a creamy meets tiramisu 
And then we have this chocolate, which is that eco paint I showed you. And that is the project for next week. Or not next week, but like I do it every two weeks. So stay tuned for that and use this video as a reference for when you go to paint. Um, when you have two different colors in a room, it just adds dimension. So the lighter color should be on two or three walls, depending on whether or not it's you only have, say if you have three walls, the majority should be the lighter color and the other one should be dark just to add dimension to your room. Don't paint texture on your walls because when you use, like say it's a doorway and everyone uses their hand on the door all the time to like swing around or touch it or open the door or whatever, it's going to be really hard to clean if it's textural because you have to get into all those grooves. Only use texture on your ceiling. And we actually plan on painting some texture in the kitchen that we're renovating so you guys will see that soon. And last but not least, if you're not painting everything uh, within a week, um, make sure that you mark your paints, which room you used it in, on which wall, like say a living room, it's not the front wall, it's the side wall, or you know, the wall without windows or whatever. So that way, if you have to come back another time and do touch-ups, like say you drilled a hole in the wall to hang a picture, but then you want to fill it in and move the picture, you're going to have to take your wallboard on compound, put it on smoothly, sand it down, repaint it. So that paint, you want to mark it so that way you're not putting on the wrong color. So, uh, if you guys have any other tips that you guys want me to iterate in the next video or add in like little bubbles on this one, please leave your comments below. I love to hear from you guys. Um, another trick that I saw on like Pinterest was you take like little blinds and you like put it right in the grooves above your wallboard and then when you go to paint the wall, I find too is that you would have to hold it and then you'd have to have so many. To me, I would personally just use the painter's tape and you can use like wide or narrow, whatever, but to each their own. But everyone's got like different tips. So if you guys have any suggestions um, or any requests. Now, of course, with doing this series on home decor, it'll be, it's our house. So we'll be deciding what we want to do, but We'll be showing you guys how to do that to make it easy friendly that way you guys can follow along and you guys can you know do it yourselves it's not gonna be oh my gosh you have to know the meaning of the universe it's so complicated so um all right so i'll see you guys in two weeks and you guys will see what we're doing this is a panel and we're putting in some kind of english decor and you guys will get to see that Bye. so here's what you're going to need so let's start by preparing the area that you're going to paint Purchase enough drop cloths to cover all the floor and any furnishings that you have that you haven't moved out of the room. I have a wide and a narrow painter's tape, so I use the wide one to tack down the drop cloths to the baseboard. I take a cloth and I dust it off, so a dry cloth to dust and a wet one to take off any paint that you may have gotten on your stuff, like your exposed baseboard. Now if you're covering up any holes, like say you have curtain rods, now I'm going to show you in the next video how you should probably have them in a different spot. And to fill in those holes, you would use wallboard joint compound with a palette, like one of these knife sets. The wider one will make it super smooth so that it blends into the wall. And then use uh, some sandpaper if you have to sand down any rough edges. And wider paint rolls for larger areas, smaller paint rolls for smaller areas. And a brush, you want to dab it to have the same texture as your brush, your uh, rollers. And you can get different kinds, you can get like sponge or the, these are the fibers. If you get the fibers, they're gonna be chucked out because you there's no way on God's green earth you're gonna be able to clean them completely. And before you use a new roller, take some wide painter's tape, wrap it all around and get rid of that fuzz because that way it won't end up on your wall. Look at all that fuzzies. You don't want that on your wall. So just wrap the tape around and get rid of it. And sometimes maybe you have to do it twice. But if you have a sponge, it's not even a problem. And this is a kind of paint bin. You put your paint at the edge and then you roll it down these grooves to get rid of the extra paint. And when you're painting a first layer, it has to be super, super soaked. Otherwise, it'll literally suck the paint that you just put on the wall. Get yourself some paint. As I've already told you, you guys can get some discounts. Use a knife to pry it open. Make sure to wash it after because you're going to, you know, use it as a utensil for food. Use a hammer to close it and seal it so your paint doesn't dry. 
and then you're going to need a stirring stick because even though you buy it and it can be shaken at the store, depending on how long it's been sitting there, the different like elements to make sure it lasts longer may surface to the top and you want a completely smooth mix, no like little striations inside your paint. Now you can also purchase this, this is an expandable pole, righty tighty lefty loosey, and that little screw is where your handle for your paint roller would go on and screw on. The only thing is with the dollar store ones, they didn't actually fit. So you may have to buy the professional ones at an actual paint store. So here are some tips for you guys. Tip number one, wear some layers. You never know how cold or hot you're going to get. So I have a shorter shirt and some shorts underneath my pants. And if anything gets wet, I don't have to go upstairs and change and get the rest of the house dirty. So to save yourself some physical pain when you're doing lots of painting in large areas for a long extended periods of time, divide your wall from top to bottom in four parts. Lower section, sit on the, fl sit on the floor when you paint. Lower section to the middle, sit on the stool. Middle to high section, stand. And when you need to reach the top, stand on the stool so you don't exhaust your arms. Use two wide tapes next to each other when you're doing the ceiling, when you're taping it off. Because the roller will still hit the ceiling because a round circle does not fit well into a rectangular spot. Tip number four. If you had to get into tight spaces, use a paintbrush and dab the spots. And then if you miss any spots, take a damp rag or old sock and wipe it off. So that's it for this week's of episode of Handy Mandy TV. And if you guys have any requests, tips that you want me to add to this video, any comments, requests, anything like that, I'd love to hear from you guys. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.